forward by popular demand because we've had it before, back again. Um, and so here it is. Uh, one subject that I often get asked about because I use land trust, um, but it's not expertise by any means. So I asked my, my good friend, Randy Hughes, Mr. Land Trust himself, who I've known for many years and had him in as a speaker, and he's considered the leading authority on the subject. It's time to be protecting your property, guys. Uh, you don't want to be on the radar for those unscrupulous attorneys. So you can be shot down because you've made yourself a target. Um, the tenants are, are now fighting for free rent and everything else. So here's critical information for you. And you can create privacy by yourself, free of charge, fly underneath that radar, radar with no, no one other than Randy Hughes, Mr. Land Trust. Welcome. It's, it's been, uh, I guess, a year since I was there uh, in, in live, and it's nice to hear that you're you're going to be opening back up live next month. Uh, I just scheduled a, a talk and a training um, in Indiana for next month, so things are finally starting to open back up uh, because, you know, these Zoom meetings are okay, but there's nothing like uh, uh, pre pressing the flesh and, and being... Uh, you know, being able to network with people and, and enjoy the the company of others that think like you do and, and you can learn from them. So it's a big relief to, to uh, see people get back out there. But subject tonight is land trusts, uh, sometimes uh, known as title holding trusts. Um, uh, lots of different references to it. And the word land is kind of a misnomer. Uh, unfortunately, some people think that when they hear the word land, they say, well, I don't need one of those trusts because I don't have any raw land. But I'll give you a list here in a few minutes on a slide of all the different types of real estate that you could put into a land or title holding trust. These are technically called grantor or revocable trusts. Uh, and they are disregarded in the eyes of the IRS. Uh, but we'll get to more of that in a minute. My, my basic theory here, folks, is that uh, privacy of ownership of real estate is the cornerstone of your financial security. Uh, there are a lot of things that real estate investors can do, uh, you know, equity stripping and all these uh, sophisticated techniques uh, to try to protect their assets. But the first step and the least expensive form of asset protection for us is to not put our name on the titles to real estate. Now, if you have your name on real estate now, that's okay, there's nothing you can do about it, but let's get your name off that real estate, get it out of your name and into a trust as quickly as possible. Um, so going forward, uh, nobody can look up you as the owner of the property. And then in the future, as you learn how to do this, you, you should learn how to take title directly from the seller to your trust without you ever being in that chain of title. You never show up. Uh, so that's the basic premise that we're going to discuss tonight. Uh, and I heard Anna giving all her standard uh, uh, disclaimers. So here's my standard disclaimer, which says I'm not an attorney or an accountant giving you a, a legal or accounting advice. <clears throat> so you're about to discover how protecting your assets can actually cut your costs of real estate investing. And obviously cutting your costs is the same thing as making more money, right? So we want to make more money doing the same deals, but using a trust instead of holding title in your name. So we're going to get bigger profits when we sell. And I'll, I'll cover that in detail here in a minute. Uh, we want to eliminate risk of selling notes or contracts. I don't know if any of you attending the webinar tonight are, are buying and selling notes secured by real estate or contract assigning, uh, but the, the trust works really, really well with those types of techniques. Um, there was some mention earlier uh, on, the, on the presentation tonight about LLCs, and I, and I want to mention to you that I use LLCs in my business every day. Uh, I'm not here to denigrate LLCs. I think they have their place. It's just, I don't think you should hold the title to your investments in an LLC. And let me give you two quick reasons. There are several reasons, but give me two, give me two quick ones. <clears throat> Number one, I can look up who owns an LLC unless you form that in Wyoming, 
uh, Missouri, New Mexico. Um, I can look up who owns them. And so, you know, uh, if, if we're trying to get our name off the public records, putting titling your real estate in an LLC isn't going to give you privacy of ownership because most states publish the owners of LLCs. Uh, the second problem with holding title directly in your LLC is, let's, let's take an example. Let's say you've got 10 single family rental houses and you title them all in one LLC. Now there's a lawsuit on one house. You're sued and you lose and the plaintiff gets a judgment against the owner of the property. Who's the owner? Right, the LLC. So now they've got a judgment against all 10 of the properties held in that LLC instead of just one. So that doesn't seem very smart to me. Um, and it will tie up all your properties. You can't refinance, you can't sell until that judgment is satisfied. So it makes a lot more sense to me to put each property into its own separate trust. So each property is insulated from the other properties. So if you have a problem on one property, yeah, you may have to kill it and give it away, but at least it won't affect all your other properties. So what I do is I use the LLC as the beneficiary of all the trusts that hold title to the real estate individually. Now, if you, if you own a lot of property, you might have multiple LLCs, or you might even enjoy the use of a, um, a series LLC, but that's something you, you can Google and investigate on your own. Um, really what we're trying to do here is avoid frivolous lawsuits. I don't teach people how to use these trusts to take advantage of somebody or to not pay your bills, your just responsibilities. You, you need to stand up like a person and, and pay those bills. But our legal system is kind of run amok here in America. And, and there's a whole lot of people out there that don't want to work hard like you do. And they would rather sue under some crazy legal theory to get money from you as opposed to working hard. And let me give you an example, because I think examples, real life examples, things that have happened to me and have happened to my students will convince you to use a trust more than, uh, than any uh, uh, just a presentation with words and on slides and, and just uh, uh, esoteric type of things, you know, real life examples. That's what convinces me to, to take action. So um, a, a good example of a frivolous lawsuit is uh, a property that I owned and I lived in with my family. Um, I sold. And six months after closing, I got a letter from the buyer's attorney. And it said, uh, my buyer had to replace all the toilets in the house, uh, some wood flooring and an air conditioner. And if you'll just send us a check for $8,000 to cover those expenses, we won't sue you. Wow. The last time I checked, I'm not responsible for maintenance after I sell a property. And th those were maintenance items. Uh, yes, we did a seller disclosure. Um, uh, that, that, as I remember, I think he even bought a home warranty program. But, you know, this is kind of crazy. I mean, what, what is going on here? It's, it's nothing more than, than intimidation. Uh, some contingency fee lawyers will sit back and send out, you know, 10 or 20 of those letters every day. Most people will give in because they don't like to be sued. Uh, it's a threatening position uh, that, that makes them very uncomfortable. And they'll say, well, you know, I don't have $8,000, but here's five. That's all I got. And they'll settle and say, okay, we'll take five and not sue you. Uh, it, it's pathetic, but it happens every day in America, and you need to learn how to protect yourself because the more successful you get in this business, the greater target you are for a lawsuit. It's kind of an oxymoron, but it's the way it works in our business. So I sent a letter back to the attorney, and I said, well, uh, you must have mistaken me for the owner of the property. I didn't own it. So he sent me a letter back and said, well, uh, if you didn't own it, uh, if you tell us who did own it, who, who did own it, we won't sue you. So I sent him a final letter and I said, uh, I believe the property was owned by some kind of a trust. 
I was just the tenant renting the property from the trust. Uh, but I don't know any more about the trust. And my last sentence said, good luck. And you know what happened? Nothing. The attorney didn't even have the respect to send me a letter back saying, okay, nothing happened. So what does that tell you folks? I know what it tells me. It was all a scam to try to milk $8,000 out of me. He knew it and I knew it that there was no responsibility on my part. Uh, and even though these grantor revocable trusts are not designed to be asset protection tools, they're more privacy tools, just the mere fact that I had it in trust and when he checked the title, it was true, it was in trust and he didn't know anything about the trust, just by having it not in my name, stopped that lawsuit. Why? Because they like easy. The contingency fee lawyers like easy. They like to send out a letter and get a check. They, they don't want to go uh, uh, chasing after some kind of a trust and, and spending time and effort doing that. So avoiding frivolous lawsuits, the more successful you get in this business, folks, the more important it's going to be for you because you, you, you are a big, big target. So what is the tool of a smart real estate investor? Don't let it intimidate you. It's just a few pieces of paper. Uh, as I mentioned, some people call it a title holding trust. What do we need to create this, this arrangement? We need a trust agreement and we need a deed and trust. That's all. The trust agreement involves two parties, a trustee and a beneficiary. The trustee holds full legal and equitable title to the property and the beneficiary owns the trust, not the real estate. So why is that important? The beneficial interest in a trust is personal property, not real estate. So when you put your property into a trust, you're owning personal property, not real estate. And I'll explain a few, a few slides on down the road here why that's extremely important to you, especially if you are the type of real estate investor that likes to sell on an installment contract. I love doing that. I do that all the time. It's a great way to make money in this business, but it bears some risks and we need to solve that problem with using a trust. What's the cost of creating land trust? Nothing. It's free. It doesn't cost anything to create a trust like it does an LLC or a corporation. There's no registration, no franchise tax, no registered agent. Uh, they are free. So, that makes a lot more sense if you're going to be very active in this business, you own 10, 20, 50, 100 properties. It's just going to be way too expensive for you to hire somebody to set up all those trusts for you if you believe in my philosophy of putting each property into a separate trust. That would be very, very expensive. So it's important that you learn how to do this, not only to save you a ton of money, but so you know exactly what you're doing. You create the trust to your, your specifications. Uh, and you, you understand things better if you do it yourself. Um, I can promise this list to you, types of property held in the trust. Well, here we go. Pretty much all kinds of real estate, even air rights, mineral rights. Um, I had a guy call me uh, and, and, and uh, said he, he wanted to buy my home study course and learn how to create trust. And I said, great, what, what are you going to do with it? And he said, well, I'm down here in Kentucky. I've got 1,500 oil and gas leases. And I want to put each one in a separate trust because some of them go boom and some of them go bust. And I don't want to put them all in one LLC or one entity because it, obviously the bad ones would affect the good ones. So he bought my course and created 1,500 separate trusts to hold his interests in. Very smart guy. Uh, but all kinds of real estate, whether it's a Kentucky Fried Chicken, an apartment building, a single family house, all types of real estate go into a land trust. Who can create these trusts? Everybody. There's no licensing requirement, no classes you have to take. Uh, you know, you do have to learn how to do this, and that's that's my job is to teach you how to do this. But once you know how to do it, you got all the, the information you need and the forms and you'll create trust uh, the rest of your life at no additional cost. So it's a great 
inexpensive way of uh, protecting your assets and hiding your assets from those nefarious characters out there trying to uh, sue to get rich instead of work hard to get rich. Why should you use a trust to make more money? Well, you get privacy and asset protection, as I've discussed, make greater profits, haven't got to that yet. They're excellent when you use them in combination with LLCs, making the LLC the beneficiary, as we mentioned earlier. They're free, and you can do it yourself with my personal help in forms. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Who's not using this profit and privacy tool? Owners that put their name on the title of real estate. <coughs> Excuse me again. You see, there, it just doesn't pay to put your name on, on a title. You get all the same benefits to real estate ownership, owning it in a trust, as if you don't own it in a trust. All the same benefits flow through to you as a beneficiary or your entity as a beneficiary. So you're not giving anything up and you're getting a whole lot. Anonymity of ownership, uh, good estate planning. We're going to cover that in a minute. And uh, actually, uh, I've got 12 bullet points we'll get to here of benefits. <clears throat> These are some common objections that I hear when I'm speaking. I spoke to 33 different RIAs last year. Um, and I hear these over and over again, so I think it's good to address them. My attorney says land trusts don't work, they're illegal. I hear that all the time. They're not illegal. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no state that has deemed them legal. There are some states where it's more difficult to use them than others because uh, title companies uh, aren't you know, familiar with them. Uh, but no, they're not illegal. It's too expensive to put each property into trust. Well, uh, if you learn how to do it yourself, it's not expensive. In fact, it doesn't cost anything. Now, that's true. If you do hire somebody, it's going to be too expensive if you have a lot of property. I don't want the extra paperwork. Well, that's true. Uh, when people ask me, what's the downside of using a trust? Extra paperwork. you got to create the trust agreement, have a trustee, got to sign some papers, but the way I look at this is, what's your net worth worth? Protecting your net worth, is it, is it worth a little extra paper? I think so. It, it certainly is the more um, successful you become in this business. And it's really smart to do this early on in your, in your investing career. Um, I had probably 15 houses in my name personally before I woke up to the fact that that wasn't real smart. And anybody could uh, look up uh, what I owned, uh, what the debt was, and pretty much approximate my net worth uh, just by looking on the public records. So uh, I had to retrofit all those 15 houses. And, and it wasn't, wasn't too big of a deal, but it would have been nice if I'd learned this uh, going into it and I could have just done it right from day one. But if you own property now, like I said before, nothing you can do about it. Let's just be as quick as possible. Uh, number four, I lose control of the property. Um, I was fearful of that too, to be honest with you. Uh, the first time I put property into a trust, because I was used to being the owner, you know, having my name on the deed. But I soon learned that um, I didn't lose control. I just changed the control. And the control was from the beneficiary level. The trustee has no power to do anything unless given written instructions from the beneficiary. So you do still have control. Uh, number five, I don't care if somebody sues me, they have the right to. Well, you know, if you feel that way, then uh, you'll probably end up with no assets and old and poor and on the streets, but, uh, <laughs> but that's your title and bad opinion. Uh, number six, I'd rather hire someone to do it for me. Uh, I do have a, a lot of people that tell me, you know, for whatever reason, they don't want to learn how to do this themselves. And would I refer them to an attorney that's knowledgeable enough to do this? Most attorneys don't know how to do this, and it's only because they weren't taught how to, how to create trust in law school. It's not a big, big item to learn in law school. So if they don't take it upon themselves after law school, they just don't know how to do it, and consequently will refer you 
to uh, forming an LLC and, and you might create those problems I mentioned earlier about holding title directly in an LLC. But I do have attorneys that I can refer you to. Um, uh, one uh, that comes to my mind, she charges uh, $1,575 per trust. So uh, that gets pretty expensive fast. Um, you can probably find it somewhere less expensive if you can find an attorney that's, that's trained in this. Um, but the, the bottom line is it's going to be expensive no matter what you do if you own a bunch of property. And that's certainly your goal is to acquire a lot of property so you can build wealth for your family. So hopefully you're going to join the club today of real estate investors that never put their name on the title to real estate again. Uh, it just is so darn dangerous. Um, let, let me give you another story right now about how dangerous it can be to own real estate in your name. In 1985, I bought a shopping center with a friend of mine, and I insisted on putting the property into a land trust. And in the year 2000, he moved uh, from Illinois, where I live, to Florida, uh, down at Fort Lauderdale, and and became a very success, successful real estate developer. Made millions of dollars until 2008. And then the crash hit him and hit hard. Um, and the last time I talked to him, he said he had $23 million of judgments against himself. I was only really concerned about one though. Um, there was a bank in Florida that filed a lien here in Illinois. Now, my friend hasn't lived in Illinois at this point for 15 years, but a bank in Florida looking for their money came up to Illinois thinking, well, maybe he still owns something up there. And they filed a lien in our county for $3.2 million looking for assets. Now here's the bottom line, folks. If he and I had gone on that deed together for that shopping center, I would have just lost everything because it doesn't matter if I'm guilty of anything or not. If you're on the deed with somebody, everything that happens to you happens to them and vice versa. You can be wiped out for no reason at all. No, you have no guilt in the situation, but you can be wiped out. I would have lost 35 years of appreciation, principal reduction, management, effort, sweat and blood for that shopping center I would have lost it all in a heartbeat because of something somebody else did. That's how dangerous it is to own real estate with other people. I don't think you should own real estate with yourself, <laughs> with your spouse or with anybody else on the planet. You should not own this stuff in your name. It's too darn dangerous. And yeah, maybe something hasn't happened to you yet. And you can say, oh, well, I'll worry about that in the future. But by the time you worry about it and it happens, it's too late. Asset protection has to be something you do proactively in advance. You can't wait until the wolf is at the door to run out and protect your assets. I mean, everybody on this webinar tonight has car insurance, don't you? You have homeowner's insurance, don't you? Why? In case there's a fire or in case you have a car accident. Well, your real estate assets are going to amount to a whole lot more than your house or your car value wise. So if you're going to be serious in this business, you need to start protecting those assets today. I will coach you through your first trust agreement. I can't give you legal advice, but I can give you some formatting uh, coaching ideas. I have full instructions in the trust agreement to walk you through and help you make those decisions on your own. And here's the kicker. You can call me seven days a week. My office line is forwarded to my cell phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I answer the phone from 7 a.m. to usually 8 or 9 p.m. Central Time, seven days a week. Who else does that? Who else that you buy anything from on planet Earth is going to give you that kind of service? I know whenever I buy anything anymore, nobody ever answers the phone. <laughs> they always want me to go to their website and spend four days trying to figure out the answer to my question. Well, I don't treat people that way. If you got a question, and you probably will, after reading my material, you'll have questions. 
either call me or email me. And here's an interesting list I got out of a magazine. You notice that we're right at the top of the list of most likely sued to be in America today. Why is that? Did you know that it, the attorneys, before they sue you, they will do what's called an asset search, which means they, they want to find out if you're worth suing. Do you ever notice that attorneys don't sue poor people? No matter what poor people do, they don't get sued because the attorney isn't going to get paid. As you landlords know out there, suing and winning is different than collecting, right? How many people have you sued and won but never got paid? That's the deal here. So by appearing that you own nothing helps right off the, the get-go uh, to keep you uh, below the surface, off the radar, as Anna said earlier. Um, and the more, uh, more the loan in your name, the bigger target you become for a lawsuit. And th weird things happen, folks, that you don't even think of. For example, <clears throat> in my county, they publish in the newspaper every owner of real estate along with the tax uh, the assessment. Every year they're required by law. It's like 40 pages, small print. So let's say I, I just need, need a payday and I just go through there and I say, well, well, this guy owns a lot of real estate. I may just slip and fall there tomorrow. And you don't even know what happened. That's the kind of mentality that some people have in America today. What's interesting to me about this slide is at the bottom where it says 97% uh, of the lawsuits filed do not go to trial. Only 3% go to trial. That's an extremely small percentage. Why is that? <laughs> because it's a game. It's a game of, of legal fees. Your attorney gets paid, their attorney gets paid, and you lose money. That tells me that only 3% of the lawyers probably know how to go to trial. The rest of them are, are good at settling with your money. So don't play the game, folks. Get out of the game. My home study course will teach you how to create your own trust. <clears throat> uh, it will teach you how to uh, pick a trustee, uh, who should be the beneficiary, should you have a, a director, should you have a board of directors. I'm going to teach you all that through my home study course. And if all my home study course did for you was keep you from sitting across the table from these guys once in your life, just once, would it be worth it? I think so, because it's very expensive to sit across the table from these guys, <laughs> let alone aggravating and sleepless nights. So I was having a, a lunch in California with an attorney friend of mine, a lady who actually does trust for my students that don't want to do it themselves. She's the one that charges $1,575 per trust. So we're having lunch and we pull up the restaurant and this top license plate there for you, I sue, uh, was the car parked in front of us. I had to snap a picture of that. And at the bottom plate, that's an attorney in my town. He is a professional sue him. So it got me to thinking, who's looking out for me? We got all these sharks swimming out there in the water. So who's looking out for me? And more importantly, who's looking out for you? So I made a list of those that are looking out for you and me. That's right. Bottom line is nobody is. It's your job to do this. If you don't take the bull by the horns and learn how to protect your family's assets, nobody else is going to do it. I have an attorney I use for all my real estate transactions. Great guy, smart guy. I wouldn't do a deal without him. But I can guarantee you he's not lying awake at night, at night worrying about my assets. That's not his job to do. That's my job to do. I need to come up with the concepts and run them by him if I need some legal advice. I need to do my own trust so I understand what I'm doing. Um, he may review things for me. That's great. But he isn't going to call me and say, hey, Randy, I was just thinking of you the other night. And this, here's a great idea to protect your assets. Isn't going to happen. Um, and there is a brief uh, history uh, about me. Uh, uh, I am... Uh, 
somewhat reluctant to say that this is my 50th year in the business. Can't believe I'm saying that, but it's true. Bought my first house in 1969. Uh, so been in the business 50 years. Um, uh, my parents did get bank go bankrupt and, and got divorced, <clears throat> which uh, was largely due to my father's alcoholism. The reason why I, I, I mentioned this to you is I didn't have any um, seed money, uh, no, no wealthy parents to get me started in this business. Uh, the very first house I bought, I used um, my paper wrap money and pop bottle money. I don't know if you, if all of you remember that, but uh, there was a deposit on the pop bottles. And if you return them to the store, you got, you know, a nickel or a dime on, on some of the bottles. So between that and my paper wrap money that I saved for years and years was what I used to buy my first house with, which was a little over $800. Uh, and I assumed his VA loan. Why do I tell you all that? Because when you start investing in life with nothing, the last thing you want to do is go back to nothing. The last thing you want to do is have somebody take your assets away from you that you've worked so hard for and so long. You've worked decades for. And to lose it all because I didn't protect my assets and didn't protect my family's future is, is a sad thing to experience. Um, you know, it'd be different if, if I had a rich daddy, he gave me a million bucks to get started with, you know, so what? I lose a million, you know, he'd give me another million maybe. Uh, but that's not the story that most of us uh, have. Uh, most of us work really, really hard for the assets we, we acquire and, and we deserve to keep them and not have them taken away from us. Um, I'm going to play a, a short video here. I was out speaking in California the other day uh, and uh, at the end of the speech, an attorney came up to me and there's a man came up to me and he introduced himself as a lawyer. And I, and he started telling me this story and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, we got to stop and, and videotape this because I think some of my, uh, folks in, in audiences when I speak would like to hear it. So let's see if it works. Perfect. You hear it? Yes, sir. Thank you. Andy, I have to tell you, uh, as an attorney here in California, I pride myself on the ability to basically break apart anything legally. And what you presented is um, beyond my ability to, to pierce. The asset protection and the methodology, especially the, the, the specific order of going out of state using some of your high-end methods is just mind-blowing to me. It's something that I, I can't find a way to pierce it. And I've tried. Well, thank you. I appreciate those comments. It's, it's uh, nice to be, have the affirmation like that from time to time that uh, most, because you're not always believed, you know, when you teach this stuff, some people think, well, maybe that's all theory, but it doesn't really work. So when you hear it from somebody that's in the streets uh, going after people from time to time, it's nice to know that we've, we've put up a barrier you can't get through. So thank yeah, you for that. You're welcome. You absolutely have. Thank you. Okay. Well, I hope you could all hear that. Nothing like, nothing like getting one of the sharks out of the water and having them testify, huh? <laughs> all right. Uh, I assume you could still hear me all right. <clears throat> yep, you're all good. All right, thank you. So a little over 10 years ago, I formed something I call the Land Trust University. And it's a membership type thing. Uh, fortunately, I was kind of ahead of the curve when it came to COBUS because I was already teaching uh, online. Um, in my Land Trust University, I have videos of me teaching the material to a live audience. My Land Trust course is taught to a live audience. Uh, it's in modules, and then you get a little test after each module, and you can see what other students are giving. It's a real live university. I have a list of Land Trust friendly lenders, Land Trust friendly insurance companies, uh, if I invent a new form or update a form like my trust agreement, I'm on the 6.0 version. I just finished, uh, well, six or eight months ago, I finished my 6.0 version, put it in the Land Trust University. Uh, I have a list of every state, their laws relating to land trusts, if any, uh, title companies, 
local attorneys, trustee services on a state by state basis. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of usable information. I'm the only guy on the planet doing a land trust newsletter. Uh, if you're a member of the university, you get access to my last 10 years worth of newsletters. And finally, I do a monthly coaching call for my students. And we, we talk on a Saturday morning for an hour uh, about privacy and asset protection and trusts um, uh, and, and all kinds of real estate related subjects. Those calls are recorded and I give you access to the last 10 years worth of calls in the university by subject matter. So you can go through and pick what's, what subjects are interesting to you. All that comes uh, on a membership basis that's $27 a month. Now, what I do when I'm speaking like this is if you get my home study course tonight, I will give you for free six months membership in the Land Trust University. Uh, so you can test it out. If you like it, you can stay in at $27 a month. It's just month to month. There's no contract to sign or no commitment. So just month to month. Um, but I think you, most people do stay in because they like the coaching calls. They like my newsletter. Uh, they like it when I invent a new form to use. Um, uh, it's just a, it's really good supplemental information for your real estate business. Uh, so that's the Land Trust University membership. Uh, you get six months free membership. Okay, I wanted to break down real quick the four steps to forming a land trust so you know exactly what I'm talking about. The step one is you create the trust agreement. That's the contract between the trustee and the beneficiary. Step two, you have to create the deed and trust. It's very much like a warranty deed, but it's got a little extra language. For example, it says that the beneficial interest is personal property. Remember we talked about that earlier? So if you're the beneficiary or your LLC is a beneficiary, it doesn't own real estate, it owns personal property. And then step three is we record the deed and trust in the county in which the property is located. Not where you live, not where you form the trust, but where the property is located. And step four is the one I do best, and that is you start sleeping better at night. <laughs> and I'm really serious, you really do sleep better at night, not having your name on these deeds. Let's break it down a little bit further. You start with a good trust agreement. <clears throat> you follow my instructions. I have bold printed instructions in that trust agreement. Your trustee signs it, beneficiary signs it. You keep for your records. That's where you get your anonymity. It doesn't get filed anywhere on planet earth. The trustee has a copy, you have a copy, nobody else has a copy. Step two, we start with that deed and trust that I mentioned earlier. If you're buying directly from the seller, the seller is going to be the grantor on the deed and your trustee will be receiving title. So he or she will be the grantee on the deed. And don't put your home address on the deed. That'll be a dead giveaway. <laughs> Always use a PO box uh, for all your mail. I mean, I personally think you should never give your home address out ever again to anybody unless, you know, maybe you're having a heart attack and you need the ambulance to find you. <laughs> but other than that, there's really no benefit to giving out your home address. Uh, step three, you record the deed in trust at the county recorder's office. Now, typically, you either mail it in or you go in in person and they stamp it. Right now, most of them aren't open, so you mail it in um, and they will... Um, stamp it and mail it back to you and you put that in your files. That's going to show the title of this real estate is owned by your trustee, not you. Ah, then we get to start sleeping better at night. I don't know if you folks like sleeping, but it's one of my favorite things to do, <laughs> especially without worries. Uh, let me just show you a quick funnel here. Uh, I think a visual might help you understand this better. Let's say you own three... Um, pieces of real estate, no matter what kind they are. You make your LLC the beneficiary of those three trusts. And then if you want to do a little estate planning, you can do that by having your living trust be the successor member of your LLC. So in other words, you're in total control of everything at the LLC level while you're alive. The moment you die, everything drops into that living trust and is dispersed according to your wishes. This is a very basic, but, but, uh, very valuable and usable 
form of estate planning. And you can do it yourself. Uh, you're going to need an attorney to draft your living trust uh, because they're very state specific. But um, other than that, you can set up your own land trust. Uh, you can even set up your own LLCs if you want to. But um, one of the bonuses I give to people who buy my home study course is a free asset protection consultation. And that's with a, a friend of mine, an associate who sets up corporations and LLCs all over the United States for my students. And you can talk on the phone or through email with him, no obligation. He'll tell you what's the best state, what the laws are. Should it be a single member, a multi-member? Uh, does, does, does that state have uh, charging order protection? So there's, there are some issues to discuss here with some, someone knowledgeable about these, uh, these state laws. Uh, you can talk to him, and if you decide to use him to form your, your LLC, fine. If, if you don't, uh, there's no obligation. He also drafts uh, living trusts as well. So hopefully that cleared up some minds. I promised to hit 12 reasons. Well, avoiding your property going through probate, reason number one, that's a great one. You don't, you don't want your property to go through probate. Why? Because it, it slows down access to the property. It's going to be six months to a year before you get access and control of the property until it goes through probate. And furthermore, probate tells the whole world what you owned and who owns it now, where it was transferred from and to. So you notice that most wealthy people, you never hear when they die about what their actual assets were. It's because they own them all in trusts and everything transferred without the public knowledge. And you, you can benefit from that philosophy as well. Judgments don't attach to the property. Remember my example of, uh, of uh, my friend and I that bought the shopping center, the judgment against him did not attach to the shopping center because it was in trust. Safer management with multiple uh, investors. Well, I'm not saying don't invest with other people. Just do it in a way that is safer and protects you and your interest. Uh, and, and that's, that's the concept behind using a trust. Uh, I know some of you out there are probably doing some wholesaling and contract assignments. Uh, it's much easier and more private to do uh, if you do those in a trust. No registered agent, no franchise fees. The IRS doesn't even want a tax return. They consider it a pass-through and you report at the beneficiary level. Protection against unhappy tenants. I know many of you on the, on the presentation tonight are landlords and landladies and um, you know the world's getting crazier and crazier every day I'm sure you noticed um, and it's just it's just something you need to protect you and your family against uh, as far as some of these tenants looking up who either is the owner or you as the property manager so let me give you a real life example um, the lady in Florida she called me a, a few years back and she said, uh, I, I need your home study course fast. And I said, what's the hurry? She said, well, I just got a call from one of my tenants down here in Florida. I've got eight rental properties plus my own personal residence. And one of my tenants just called me and said, a man knocked on the door asking for me. And I know who he is and I'm not interested. This is what we call modern day stalking folks. Somebody's interested in somebody else, they type in their name, they print out nine street addresses, and they go knocking door to door looking for you. So, you know, if, if, if that doesn't scare you lady landlords into doing this, nothing will, because they are getting really, really crazy. I had, uh, had a friend of mine who um, bought my home study course, and he wasn't my friend at the time, but I was at a meeting and I asked him about it. And I said, why did you buy it? And he said, well, we were sitting at home on a Friday night, about 930 and someone knocked at the door. And it became one of our tenants. And the tenant said, hey, I've got a problem with my toilet. I need you to come over and unplug it. And my friend said, I'll be over tomorrow morning. It's 930 on Friday night. I'm not coming out tonight. And the tenant said, oh, no, you don't understand. You're coming out tonight. A big problem occurred. They had to call the police to have him removed. Uh, and it was that night that, that my friend realized you don't own this stuff in your name. Because all the tenant had done was typed in his address and then 
found out who owned it and typed in the owner's address and marched on over and demanded action at 9.30 on Friday night. You don't want that to happen. I've been a landlord for 50 years. 20 of those years, uh, I had two little girls growing up in my house. And the last thing I needed was some guy I was evicting to come knock on my door and my seven-year-old daughter answer. So there's some real life safety issues here, folks. Not only privacy and asset protection, but real life safety issues if you're gonna be in this business. Don't own this stuff in your name. Number eight, avoids due on sale clause, transfer tax, and reassessment upon sale. You save a ton of money. This is where you're making more money is by saving money, doing your transactions, um, using a trust. And privacy of ownership helps you avoid ID theft because you're getting out of the system. Repossess, don't foreclose. As I mentioned earlier, I like to sell houses on an installment contract. I mean, hey, banks got rich doing it. Why can't I? The problem with selling on an installment contract is what happens if they don't make the payments, right? And that happens every now and then. So if you sell the beneficial interest in the trust, on an installment contract, you're selling personal property, not real estate. Therefore, if your buyer defaults, you repossess the beneficial interest. You do not foreclose. Now that may take a while to soak in, but that concept alone is worth you attending tonight's presentation. If you don't take anything away from it, take that one away, because that'll save you a lot of money, a lot of legal fees, and a lot of sleepless nights when somebody defaults on a contract to buy your property. So I explain all that in the course material. Uh, same deal with selling on a lease option. I know many of you like to sell on a lease option. I don't sell the real estate on, a, on an option. I sell an option on the beneficial interest in the trust. Again, I'm selling an option on personal property, not real estate. And finally, naming your trust. I have a whole chapter in my home study course on how to name and number your trust. I think it's very important that you pick a, a, a name that's uh, uh, maybe intimidating, uh, certainly not uh, 123 Vine Street, um, and certainly not your name, which I've seen in many trust uh, documents. I've even seen people put their social security number in the name of the trust. So uh, there are a lot of stupid decisions made out there. So you need somebody who's got some experience, and I've got uh, 40 years of experience creating these trusts, designing them, uh, naming them and numbering. You got a whole chapter on that. That's really the fun part of this business. I love naming and numbering my trust. So again, if you get my home study course tonight, I'll give you six months free uh, membership in the Land Trust University, which will give you access to just a, a plethora of information uh, that will help you make money in this business. It's a simple proven system. You save money, you fill in the blanks, uh, and you do it at no cost. More about the, the online training, the video, and the audios. Uh, you, can, you can listen to me on your phone, on your iPad, your tablet, uh, in your car if you want to. You listen to me, teach the material, and review it. Um, I give you real-life examples of how these trusts make you more money in the course material. Um, you can use the trust for foreclosures, subject twos, lease options, contract assignments. I mean, every kind of real estate you can use these trusts for. And again, I answer my phone, so I get great service. What else is included? Well, you get the trust agreement, the deed and trust, all the, the management forms you might need. If you want to change the beneficiary, change the, the uh, trustee, uh, all everything you ever need the rest of your life is included in my material. You fill in the blank and hit print. And I mentioned that already about the LLC specialist. You get a free consultation with my friend, the LLC specialist. So what's it cost? Not a whole lot. $597 uh, will get you the, the entire home study course. And uh, it'll actually get it to you. Um, I'll give you a hard copy and a download version. You, you'll get that immediately. Uh, You'll get immediate access on your purchase to the Land Trust University where you can download everything immediately while you're waiting for the hard copies to arrive in the mail. Um, so that's only $5.97. You can deduct that off your taxes. So you know, 
Uncle Sam will help you pay for some of that. Uh, let me just give a real short uh, uh, final testimonial here. I think you'll find interesting. This guy um, was named TJ, and he was in um, yeah, he was in college when he made this testimonial for me. Hi, my name's TJ. I'm from Illinois. I'm 21 years old, and I'm a senior in college. I recently acquired a piece of land down in Florida, and I knew a little bit about land trust, but not much. After finding some research and doing some online, I came across Randy's website. I wasn't too sure about it all at first, but I did call him because he had his number on the webpage, and I eventually bought the Land Trust Made Simple home study course. The course was great, and I was actually able to make my own land trust 100% by myself, no attorneys involved, no realtors involved, and that's me with very little real estate experience. If I can do it, anyone can do it, and I want to reassure you that it is well worth the money. It was quite a testimonial. He just sat down and banged it out the first time. So my land trust made simple <coughs> combo deal. Um, I do have a an advanced course that gets into teaching you how to do uh, uh, personal property trusts. So if, if any of you are interested in putting your car, your boat, your motorcycle, your shotgun in a trust, that would be a personal property trust. And I handle all that in the advanced course with with uh, a lot more. Uh, you don't need the advanced course. Uh, you may want it, but you don't need it to create a trust. All you need is the basic course. But I do, uh, when I'm speaking, I always throw this out because I, I offer a special deal. Um, uh, they're both $5.97 a piece, but if you buy them together, I discount them by $300 uh, down to $8.97. Um, I also have an elite package, which has all four of my courses, both my land trust courses, my uh, option course, teach you how to buy and sell options on real estate, uh, and my privacy and asset protection course. If you were to go to my website tonight and buy all four of my courses, it would cost you 1550 bucks. But if you buy them all together in what I call my elite package, uh, I give it to you for 997 so I'm going to give you a link here in a minute and you can make up your own mind as to what you might be interested in. But bottom line is you work hard to acquire your assets, invest a little bit of time and a little bit of money in learning how to protect them. As I mentioned earlier, you can't wait till the wolf's at the door to do this. You got to be proactive. I do have a 100% guaranteed uh, money back guarantee. Uh, you can check me out, uh, read the course for a week. For any reason you don't think it's for you, just return it to me, uh, and I will give you a full refund. So um, I recently purchased some properties and put them into a land trust. When I go on to the Toledo website um, to see how it's listed in the Aries, it listed as uh, the owner being my LLC as trustee. Is that okay? It never mentions the trust. Is that how it typically goes? Well, it sounds to me like the title to your property is in an LLC. Well, and, and yeah, I don't recommend that <clears throat> uh, for a couple reasons. One is, again, uh, if you form your LLC in a state where that's public information, now you're right back to square one. You might as well have it in your name. Um, number two, some states don't allow entities to be trustees without being insured, bonded, having, having a minimum net worth. So you may have a problem there depending on you know, where you form the the LLC and then what state you got the property in. So the so I formed the LLC in Ohio, the property is in Ohio, but it's in a land trust and it's on the deed it's listed as I'm, I'm not gonna give the exact name, but sure uh, it'll say um say uh, something LLC 
trustee under the main trust. Okay, that's how it's on a deed. But when you go on the website, it shows the LLC as the owner, LLC trustee as the owner. Yeah. And to me, yeah. that's kind of like defeating the purpose, isn't it? It is. It is. And, and I always tell my students, don't make your own LLC, the, the, the trustee, uh, for a couple reasons, Mike. Um, um, every state, to my knowledge, except Florida, has what's called a merging of interest law which says you basically you can't have a contract with yourself. And if, if, if you're the sole owner of the LLC and you're the sole beneficiary, you basically have a contract with yourself. And so it's, it's void and really you don't have a trust. So that's the first problem. Second problem is even more important to me. And that is at some point you're going to need that trustee to sign something, a deed because you're selling out of the trust or a mortgage because you're putting financing on the property in the trust. And at that point, you're going to have to prove to a title company, a lender, an attorney, a closing agent, you're going to have to prove to somebody that you have the authority to sign on behalf of that, that LLC, which means you're going to expose your operating agreement. And I, my philosophy is you're never going to see my operating agreement unless you sue me. That's a private document. So it's just much easier, Mike, to have uh, an individual as your trustee they're much harder to track down, uh, much harder to serve if they try to serve the, the, the trust, some legal document. And it's much easier for them just to get their, their signature notarized and boom, things happen a lot faster. So if it, is, if it is in your LLC now, what I would recommend is use your deed out of the LLC to your trust. And you probably want your LLC to be the beneficiary, not the trustee. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, I believe um, that what you said that the LLC, since it can be looked up, should be the beneficiary. But as far as it LLC being listed as the owner, the form you fill out with our local government, it just says owner, address, things like that. So the trustee does go into that owner slot it doesn't make it the owner as long as it says trustee. But I understand what you're saying is when your LLC is your trustee, they can look up the LLC, but it's still only the trustee, not the owner of the property. Well, no, that's, that's incorrect, Anna. The trustee is the full legal and equitable owner of that property. The beneficiary owns the trust the trustee owns the property. Now, that's from a legal standpoint. From a tax standpoint, the IRS says, we don't see this trust. Just, just tell us who's at the, who the beneficiary is, and we'll give all the benefits to the beneficiary. Yeah, I was talking IRS. But what, what you said is um, about actually taking the LLC out of public record also and making them the beneficiary. And you can just put, you know, anybody for your trustee anybody that's not going to charge you every time you want to use them <laughs> yeah I, I have a whole chapter in the home study course on who can be and who should be your trustee so i give you a lot of good advice there but occasionally some of my students say they call up and say randy i just don't have anybody to be a trustee and in that event i refer them to uh, some trustee services that i know uh, and they usually charge most of them charge the same thing about three hundred dollars a year or three hundred dollars the first year and around $200 each year thereafter. We do have title companies that do it here, but I believe other than the, the initial charge, they only charge you if you need to have something signed. I'm not real educated on that because in 47 years, I've never sold any properties. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. They'll, they charge you for everything. You know, uh, if, they, if they get the tax bill, they'll charge you 50 bucks to forward it to you. Uh, if you have a mortgage to sign, there may be 20, 20 signatures. They'll charge you 50, 75 bucks for each signature. Uh, so it gets pretty expensive using a, a, a business know, a business or a title company. Uh, the individual trustees are much more reasonable in their pricing. We had another question pop up that says, can I use an LLC as a trustee 
which we said just makes it public, if it has 50-50 joint share operating agreement with myself and another person? Well, I think, I think technically you could because now it's not just a contract between you and you. It's a contract between you and, and somebody else. But again, I still wouldn't do it for all the reasons I've given. Okay. Maybe you can address this, Randy. One of the most common things we have here locally is the water company. The mm -hmm. water always has to stay in the owner's name, doesn't switch around to landlord or to tenants or anything like that. So in order to get your water turned on in a new property, if you have a trust, they, of course, they just want whatever it is. And of course, there's only one water company, so you don't get to negotiate. But I find just turning in the page that says I have the ability to turn on utilities and turn off utilities and uh, put in tenants and rehab and, and do evictions. I just give them the page that says what they want, you know, what they want. And they seem to be pretty good with that. That takes care of it. Just uh, out of curiosity, Anna, uh, because in, in my county, we can uh, as represent ourselves as the property manager and, and have the power of the water turned on in the property manager's uh, business name. Uh, can you do that? Or does it have to be the owner's name? I am very lucky to be able to do that. But that's because I'm a licensed realtor. You have to be a licensed realtor through the state in order to be a property manager. Now, I've helped a couple of people that have your trust to, um, it's the word manager that you can't use, property manager, but you might have an agreement that's property maintenance, shall we say, <laughs> just to change the verbiage. I mean, uh, you, basically, I think you could probably do everything in managing a property except for the rent, because then that takes, um, you know, escrow accounts, so uh, no commingling of funds, things like that. Yeah. And, and when you get into that end of it, um, it does require a license in the state of Ohio. Gotcha. I know that this subject uh, may be a little strange to you at first, but it becomes very comfortable. Uh, once you get your trust, your initial trust agreement formulated and on your computer, it's really just a matter of five minutes to, to create a trust. You fill in, you know, who's a trustee, who's a beneficiary, uh, you date it and you hit print. <clears throat> so once you, once you learn, you know, study my course, probably take you uh, probably three hours to sit down and read through the course all at one time. Um, then you create your first trust agreement. Like I said, if you want to send it to me, uh, I'll help you with that. Uh, but then once, once you're up and running, uh, it, it operates so smooth and you'll be so glad that you are not on title anymore. And I, I'm, believe it or not, after 40 some years of using these trusts, I still run into times when I say, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know I could do that with a trust. And I didn't know that that benefit was going to be there. I'm still learning benefits uh, being in this business. Uh, I'm a single family house guy primarily. Um, and uh, it, it's, it, they are just really interesting uh, animals to, to deal with. And I think you guys will be impressed with all the different techniques you can use these trusts on and, and how they protect you in, in the meantime. So I encourage you all to, to, to do this, get your course, study it. I'll be there to support you. Uh, call me if you have any questions. I'm here seven days a week. I have a court anecdote that might kind of bring it home to people. Again, I hadn't used, I've used trusts for decades and never had any problems. And one of the trustees I did use was my son because he had a different name than me. And, um, you know, he was just single at the time. Well, decades go by, they get married, they have kids or whatever. And I never uh, took it out of his name, just didn't think about it. Well, when it came time for a divorce, the first thing the attorney on the other end wanted was a copy of every single trust that my son had a name on because my, name, uh, my son was going for the kids. And, um, and uh, I told him, no, I don't give my trust to anybody. Well, they subpoenaed it. So what happened is instead of giving them to trust, I just give them the page that said change of trustee. 
and I changed the trustee to somebody else and just handed all the change of trustee uh, documents, one page documents for each trust and took them to court and never heard another word about it. That's a prime example. Thank you so much, Anna, of how these, these, these trusts just, they pop up these benefits that you just can't imagine until it happens. Yep. Uh, I always, uh, uh, lots of times I have people, my students call and say, uh, the title company wants, title company wants a full copy of my trust agreement. Well, the trust agreement I'm going to give you folks is 40 pages long. It's a, it, it is a, you know, it's an animal that I've created over the last 40 years. You know, some trusts are one page long. So they say, should I give them the full trust agreement? And I say, well, no, I wouldn't. I'd first offer up um, a certification of trust, which is just a, a two-page document that says the trust exists and who the, who the trustee is. But if they won't accept that, I tell the students, uh, you can amend that trust. These are amendable, which means I can amend that down to a four-page trust and give it to the title company, and they can do what they do with it, and then when they give it back to me, I'll amend it back up to my 40-page trust. I can do that in, in, in an afternoon if I need to. So the flexibility of these trusts in our business is just phenomenal, uh, and I encourage you to, to get, involved, get on the trust uh, bandwagon because uh, your business and your life will operate much smoother at the trust level than at the personal level. Happen to have any questions uh, before you want to uh, make your decision here tonight, uh, shoot me an email. And it's uh, very easy to remember. It's just Randy at MrLandTrust.net. Right. Uh, should I give out my phone number too? If you wish. All right. My phone number is... So if you want to see if I answer my phone, <laughs> like I say I do, call me. There now, the, only time, the only time you'll get my voicemail is if I'm on the other line with another student, and then I call you back really quickly. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Thanks again for the opportunity, Anna. It's always a joy to talk to you folks there.